I want to welcome you guys to Rancho del Arroyo, the newest map coming soon to Call of the Wild on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. And first and foremost, I just want to say a huge thank you to Expansive Worlds for the opportunity to play this map in early access. And I'm super excited to get to bring you guys along for our first hunt here. And what better way to start out than with a pheasant? Or potentially multiple pheasants. I don't know if we made that second shot. They were calling over here, and I wanted to just run around with the 16 gauge in hand just in case. There's actually a couple more that are still in here. I like that they don't all immediately flush. We hit that one, and I think it'll bring it down. But I actually quite like that. The action with the pump on this is quite quick. Nice little silver 14.3. Diamond is 20.3, so gotta be a whole lot bigger. But that was pretty cool. I mean, they are one of the feature species, I would say, on Rancho del Arroyo, so I'm quite pleased to get one right away here. And I think it will be good to actually get a look at a hen as well. So that's a 6.6. .6. I don't imagine the hens could make silver then, but I managed to get two of them right away. They're still over there calling, but I think we'll sort of leave them alone so we don't make too much hunting pressure and delete that zone, because I'm quite certain we'll be back here. I really think that we should do a pheasant-centered hunt at some point, and... Like I said, I think we'll keep that zone for when we get to that. I think there must be a bobcat in the area, because these rabbits just came hopping over here. I'm pretty sure. We can just kill both of them. And actually, this other one's running here too. We might be deleting zones. Let's just spot it and see. It's actually, I think, a big one. Because I'm pretty sure. From what we saw on the EW stream, they seem to be scored similarly to the white-tailed jackrabbits on Layton. And if that's the case, this would be one that has a lot of potential. It's actually... Am I right? Yeah, it's 0.1 below being a level 2 diamond. 6.3 is the requirement for the jackrabbits on Layton as well, so I'm guessing that is going to be all the same. I don't know what a modeled fur type is, but that looks pretty cool. I like the ears and everything on that. And I don't even know if either of these were anything special. That's a dark brown fur type. And then modeled again... I don't know what that means, but I'm guessing it's more like a common if we've had two of them already. Some pretty good information, by the way. Across the lake here, we have some white tail drinking. I thought that looked like a pretty big uh, big one. That's a level 5. Just chilling there feeding. But we can know the white tail drink time for this map now. And it's 8 to 11.30. Pretty much the same length as the drink time on Leighton Lakes. And we're going to have to see. We'll explore around and see just how open like some of the lakes are. But because the drink time length is the same, and I would say because there's overall considerably less water, this might be a better white tail grinding map, but certainly that right there is going to be our priority. We'll try to get in and take that with the M1. I guess maybe some of our shotgun shots were actually spooking some of these. There are white tail everywhere over there, but that might be a decent opportunity for a shot at that bighorn. If he stays facing that way, we can probably drop a 30 odd six round into his heart. We'll see if he'll maybe lift his head. He's actually doing that. And that right there is a dead level 5 bighorn. And at that distance, th there were two things I noticed, actually. Number one, I think it was a bigger horns one, so it should be a guaranteed diamond. The other thing was, something is off about his fur type. That's not one that we've seen on Silver Ridge Peaks. So I don't know exactly what he is, but I am quite excited to go and find out. This poor lake is just going to be covered up in hunting pressure, but that's a nice whitetail buck. Technically, the estimate he has a chance, but I'm pretty confident it's actually not big enough to make diamond. Got pheasants warring calling up there. Like, this is literally right by the starting outpost, and we've had bighorn, pheasant, jackrabbit, and whitetail all here. Another good-sized whitetail. I really think this could be one of the best maps for just generally finding diamonds and animals in a quick manner. By the way, we've kind of seen it in the trailers and stuff, and I'm pretty sure I just saw it with one of the white tail running away. Their tails are kind of like bigger and fluffier now, and I find that to be so much more realistic, and I'm looking forward to seeing that up close. But for now, I want to take a look at this. Like, the texture on this bighorn is different. It 100% is. Got a pheasant flying by. Let's see if we can hit that real quick. It looks kind of dark to me. Uh, what? For some reason, the... Shotgun wasn't going off? Well, I guess that one got away. I don't know if that was a bug or if that was just my mouse being weird, because I've had some issues with it. Anyway, 
now we can officially see a 173 Diamond Bighorn. It's a dark brown fur type, but there's like... I'm not sure if this is, like, fur that was on the old Bighorn, but he, it looks scruffier to me. Like, there's some kind of added texture. I can't tell exactly what it is, but there's there's a difference there. Pretty proud of that heart shot. And you can just see how huge that is. I think 173 is bigger than any we ever killed on the live game, so go figure. But certainly we'll send that to the Trophy Lodge and take a look at it when we're done. And now I want to go see the Whitetail tail that I mentioned. It was never something I really thought needed change, but now that I'm seeing it, and by the way, a 237 scoring buck is not bad, that just seems so much more fitting. Like the size of the tail and everything, I think they did a really good job there. Double lunged him in all, and what, we've shot four of the nine species on this map, and we haven't gone 700 meters from the lodge yet? Alright, we have another rooster here. That time the gun actually went off. I think the rest of these are heads. Shooting has really been a little bit tough with these. They fly pretty quick. Just gonna hit that one for the sake of maybe seeing what we can get out of it. That's another rooster there as well. See if it'll actually fly. It looked different to me. If we could hit it, we could find out. We finally got it there in the third shot. I'm glad this one fires so quickly, because otherwise I'm not sure how we would know. That's cool. I didn't even realize this one was different. It's a gray. 18.7 score. And I think... Yeah, if 3kg is the max, that's a pretty big one. Especially with 20.3 being diamond. We'll probably taximize that. I thought that one was common. And then there's the hen that we shot on the ground here. That is actually a common. It's cool that they do, like, the grounded and don't give you any score if you shoot them on the ground. Because it adds so much more challenge to it, but... Wherever this other one got to, I'm reasonably confident something was different about it, too. And, I mean, there's tracks everywhere, but surely we can find some blood and figure out where it got to. It's not the gray that we just had. It's kind of similar. It's actually a molting. So that's just kind of like feathers missing, then. I don't know exactly what the molting process is, but it's something to do with, like, old feathers. I don't know, shedding is the right term, but and then new ones uh, that replace them. That's cool they actually implemented that. I like it. I mean, it's a silver, but then again, we're also on a early access build that these aren't gonna save to our main game anyways. We might as well tax it and get to take a look at that as well. That is borderline desktop background worthy. That is just such a nice view. And I know we have a ton of hunting yet to do here, but I did want to take a moment and just appreciate for one, like, the views you can get, and just the terrain and everything that's gone into this map. Like, when I picture, like, a North American desert, this is what I'm imagining. Like, this kind of brush and the cactuses and just the views you can get across, like, this huge, expansive landscape. It's so well done. I'm really, really pleased with that, and I can't wait to chase some stuff through, like, this kind of terrain. I think we'll go through here now and see if we can encounter anything. Now, these guys, I've been looking forward to encountering this entire time, and... I think that's a big one. He kind of moved right when we shot. We might as well take the two when we get the chance. But I'm really thinking, they're so small, and you can see how much brush is in this area. Like, getting up high is going to be one thing and getting to spot them in the distance. But I can really imagine the challenge of specifically trying to bow hunt these guys, like, from their feed zones when they're in this brush, could be a lot of fun. Now, we did actually see... A very similar thing to the wild boar, and I think we kind of established it on one of EW's live streams for the map. They had the same scoring as the wild boar, but this female stayed there and continued feeding, and that's a thing that is kind of unique to the wild boar, so they must have similar AIs as well. But a 115 gold, I'm pretty sure that that was at 26 to 31, I think? on the weight estimate is the max estimate for these guys, just based off, again, what we saw on EW stream and the fact that this guy's about 30 shy of diamond. Pretty cool, though. I think, again, we'll tax this guy to get a better look in the lodge. I just really like them. I think they're such cool little animals. And it stands out quite well over there. One of the other species we actually haven't shot yet, the Mexican bobcat, and it's just a level two, and I guess we spooked it at some point. I'm not sure if she's struggling to like, Pathfind over there? Definitely made a lung shot. Pretty sure it is just, like, a gray. I want to say on EW stream we saw ones colored like that. 
it almost did look albino, but I think it's just how bright the lighting is out here. Definitely not albino. It's actually the common fur type, I guess, and that's really cool looking. I like the, uh, like the fur on the sides of the face there. They have really prominent whiskers too, but that is a silver female, so not too bad. I'd love to get a male one to see if there's any, like, physical differences, but we'll have to see if we can get that lucky. I mentioned at the beginning, by the way, that the map is coming soon for PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And at least as of now, that's the best information I have regarding a release date. Unless something were to come out before this video drops, that's the best I can actually give you guys. And speaking of that, at the time this video comes out, as we pick up a max weight bobcat track, we'll have to see if we can find that. But I'm going to be getting on a plane heading to Georgia, so for the next week, I won't actually get to live stream this map. And just in general, there's going to be videos every single day, but no streams until I get back, of course. I've noticed, by the way, that there's something going on with the tracks, because we have these setting like we always do at Particle and Glow, but I don't think they're having the actual particle effect. It's just kind of the glow. I don't even know where her next track is, but you certainly can't see them nearly as well. And I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it makes it a lot tougher to track stuff out here. And I don't know, maybe that kind of encourages even more so than I think some of the brush does hunting slowly. Because I think just because you're bound to spook things that you can't see, it does make sense to want to spend more time walking around. At this point, I'm just trying to catch up to this guy, but hopefully now that we have a direction of travel, we can actually figure out where he got to. This has been one of the absolute worst tracks I've ever been on. Just the lack of the particle effect on those tracks has really made it difficult to continue to stay with him. And I know that probably was not a vital hit. It had a chance, but I just want to bring him down and see what he looks like because actually he went down kind of quick, so he might've been okay. But like I said earlier, I wanted to see the models of them and almost any other species would be pretty much unaffected by this. But with the lack of particle effect, this is all you're looking at is that little bit of like the purplish color. When you're far away, like take away the tracking cone there, there's not much to look for. So anytime it's in brush and anytime that it turns, it is a real pain, but it looked like that was a non-vital hit. So we'll lose the gold on him. But luckily, bobcats are much like lynx and they run extremely slowly. So we're able to find him really quickly. And we'll just take a look and see what this is actually looking like. 27.2, diamond's 27.6, so that was a big one. 40.5 kg. A little further forward might have been okay, but the angle we had didn't really allow for that. But yeah, I mean, they might be a little bit physically larger, but there's not a whole lot of differentiating characteristics, but I like that. The tan color is really nice. I'm curious to see what else they have to offer for fur types. It took a bit of enticing to call it out of the brush, but we finally have a coyote here, and... I noticed that in EW stream a couple of weeks ago, they seem to be like a little bit fluffier. And I'm not sure if it's incredibly obvious with the females, because I thought there was a male that looked even fluffier than this. And I guess it could be changed. This is, of course, a beta build, but you can see specifically more around the neck there. There's like added fur, and I think that looks good. It gets a little more of a like more of a coyote vibe and less of like a domestic dog kind of vibe that the old ones had. And to continue the trend of things we haven't shot, there is apparently just going to be a airmail delivered turkey. It was actually a decent sized one. In fact, a 4.4 gold. Not sure what buff is. I can't see anything obvious with the feathers there. Maybe that's just kind of a common. We'll go ahead and tax that, I guess. Maybe we can see it in the lodge better or like when they're strutting. That was interesting. Just flew right to us. I'm actually curious if that turkey is going to hang around, or maybe if we can still hit it while it's flying. If we can... I think we got that. If we can actually compare, like, whatever the buff uh, plumage type was, the problem is, that is a buff plumage type as well, so I'm not sure what we're looking at, by the way. Pretty much the bottom end of the spectrum. Almost impossible to get a silver turkey, but we've managed, so... I guess that it's impressive in its own right. That is not a bad mule deer. After so long, I've not seen any to actually encounter. I gotta say as well, I like the blonde fur type out here. Just, it reminds me more of what a desert mule deer would be. But anyway, after considerable time spent out here, 
we officially have one of every species on Rancho Del Arroyo taken down, and I think on that note, it's about time to head back to the Trophy Lodge and take a look at what we got today. I'm just genuinely impressed with everything I've seen thus far, and there's so much coming along with this update, including a bunch of bug fixes, and mentioned among those were fixes for the Great One, the Render Glitch, and the Disappearing Tense Glitch, so I'm really looking forward to actually having all that implemented, but there also were a number of new multi-mounts, and unfortunately with what we taxonomized today, we could only actually put one together. But there's one for two Javelina kind of challenging each other, one for if we go down a little further, a Bobcat and a Coyote challenging each other. I think that's a really good idea, by the way. I like kind of the direction that's going. We have Rival Rabbits with two Rabbits fighting. A little further down, we have another new one with the two Fleeing Pheasants. And then, unless I'm missing any, the last new one is this two turkey types, and it's for a Rio Grande and a Merriam turkey, which, that's an important distinction. They have changed the name of these turkeys. They used to be called, I think, just Wild Turkey. That's a really good move on their part, I think, doing that, because maybe one of these days we can have, like, a Turkey Grand Slam as well, but one of the most important things is the Rival Rabbits and the Fleeing Pheasants. They are extra small uh, platform multi-mounts, which means you can put them on these little platforms like on the tables and stuff and that is going to open up so much for the trophy lodges so i cannot wait to get this in the live game and start hunting pheasants and rabbits and just really i think make the trophy lodge come alive in some ways with some of these and i hope they continue down that path in the future like other small species multi-mounts like this it could really make the trophy trophy lodges have so much more variety so i'm hoping they do that and just kind of a quick look around we have our little rabbit here which was i think 0 0.07 off a of diamond I like the ears, like the gray color, they just did a really good job with them. We of course have our pheasants here, our diamond bighorn from earlier was still quite a nice surprise, and I'm convinced there's something with their textures, like if we just zoom in, the fur looks a little more realistic. I think they did a good job, and I'm curious if that's a thing for just Rancho del Arroyo, or if SRP has it as well. Then our two turkeys, they're both the buff fur type, or I guess plumage type in the case of turkeys, I'm not sure what that means. Looking forward to actually kind of finding that out. And then last but not least, I did taxonomize the Javelina as well, just to get a good look at them, because as I mentioned at the time, they are one of my favorite new additions. I really want to get a couple of diamond ones, see what kind of rares there are, and because of that multi-mount, maybe put a couple of those together. But I'm super impressed and super excited to continue hunting out here for other stuff on Rancho del Arroyo, and I think something that I want to do very soon, especially given the fact that we now know about this pheasant multi-mount and the fact that I'm going to want to hunt a ton of pheasants, I really want to explore a couple of different shotguns and see if maybe like the 20 gauge semi-auto or something might be better for them because I'm going to want to take out every rooster pheasant I can and make a bunch of those multi-mounts and just add variety to the lodge. But anyway, that will be for a future video and that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.